Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5 till 10, we learn the following. Of such an one will I glory, but of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. So what I learned from verse 5 is that Paul is saying that he glories in Jesus Christ, but he does not glory in himself or his infirmities, meaning his human weaknesses. He does not glory in that, but he glories in Jesus Christ. For such an one will I glory. Verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. So Paul, I think here he's saying that by sharing the truth of himself, he would sound prideful. And people will think he's far better than what he actually is, because he knows himself. Or better than the way he sees himself, if he would tell people the truth of who he is. Verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Right? So now he's saying, the reason I cannot tell you is because of the revelations I have received, people may take me, may exalt me and think I'm way better than what I am. That's why I cannot share these things with you. And it's an, it's an interesting pattern with the prophets that they've always felt the need to not share everything they know about the revelations. They've always have, uh, had a need to share less because Paul explains his reasons why. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. And then he explains what that means. He says, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now he says here that he was given a thorn of the flesh and he tells you this is what comes from the devil it doesn't come from the lord it comes from the devil and it buffers him that means torments him it tortures him but what we learn here is how he looks at it this thing is not comfortable for him it's a thorn it hurts i love the way he looks at it he says why was it given to me and he says lest i should be exalted above measure so he understands that this thorn it's there to help him. It's there to help him to be humble. That's how he sees it. Even though it hurts, even though it's not comfortable. We learn further in verse 8 when he says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Three times I asked the Lord that it will depart from me. So he's asking the Lord, can you take this thorn out? Three times he asked the Lord. So we can learn that Paul is not enjoying this thorn. It's not fun for him. He wants it gone. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. This is what the Lord says. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. We learn that the Lord's strength that he gives to us, it's made perfect when we go through challenges. This is what the Lord is saying to him, that you receive my grace, make you perfect when you are weak, not when you are exalted and you think you are, you are better than everybody else. Most gladly, therefore, I would glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, Paul is saying here that what? He would glory in his infirmities. Remember in verse 3, he wanted gone. But now he says he would glory in it. Why is that? It's not comfortable. He's not enjoying having it. But he understands the outcome that it's going to help him. Right? He says, I glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. He understands that this thing will allow the power of Christ to rest upon him and to make him perfect through his weakness. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, right? In reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. Now we can see now a change, a change of thinking that he say, he's mentioning all the challenges that he, he goes through. And he says, what are those challenges? He says, I take pleasure in my infirmities. In a way he finds he's thankful for his human weaknesses. He's thrown in the flesh, right? Reproaches in necessities, things that he cannot live without. And he has to depend on the Lord to provide those things for him. He's thankful for that. In persecutions, we know Paul has been through a lot of persecutions. He's thankful for those persecutions, right? He's thankful for in distress for Christ's sake, discomforts, the challenges that comes as he tries to serve Jesus Christ. He's thankful for those challenges. He says, for I'm weak, then I'm strong because the grace of Jesus Christ is sufficient for him and it will make him perfect in his weakness. So we have a scripture, Ether 12 verse 27, gives us more insight into this doctrine of grace and weakness and perfection. Ether 12 27 reads as forth, 
And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. That's Paul. He's doing his best to follow Jesus Christ, to serve him. And what happens? His weaknesses are revealed to him. The weakness have always been there. But the Lord says, I will show you. That means all this time they are there, but you do not see them. But when you come unto Christ, your eyes in a way are opened and you say, wow, I am this bad person. Right? That's what the Lord is saying here. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble. So the Lord, when he says, I give men unto weakness, doesn't mean he gives you a weakness, but he gives you the gift of seeing your weakness. He became more humble when he began to see clearly his weakness. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. You see, it's interesting that these scriptures were written on different continents, but they sound like they were written by the same person. It's so amazing when scriptures do that. My grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. So now, this is a weakness. It's your weakness. You come unto Christ. You see it. You can see clearly your weaknesses. And then the Lord gives you this gift to see your weakness. And he says, my grace, okay, my enabling power, it's enough to help you to overcome your weakness. And what's the requirement to have the Lord's grace help us overcome our weakness? The key word is humble. Because Paul was thankful, glorified in his dependence on the Lord. That's been humble. When you understand that you need to depend upon the Lord to help you to overcome that weakness. You don't overcome that weakness by yourself, but the Lord is the one that overcomes it for you. And when you understand that, you are humble and you glory in depending on the Lord that's been humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, we learn that about Paul, that he had his faith in Jesus Christ had increased because of him learning more about his weakness and his dependency on the, on the Lord to overcome it. His faith in Christ was humbled. His faith in Christ was increased and he became more humble in that he understood that he depended more on the Lord and he was thankful for that. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then I will make weak things become strong unto them. The Lord is the one that will help you overcome your weakness. But before that happens, we need to demonstrate humility. We need to depend more upon him and have more faith in him. When we do that, like the way Paul did, that's how we overcome our weakness. What I love about these verses is they teach me that I ought to be thankful for all the challenges in my life. I ought to not complain the way Paul initially did. He's asking the thorn to go away. But I need to understand that the challenges in my life, they are there to help me to depend more on Jesus Christ, to draw closer to him, right? That's why Paul glories in all his challenges because he understood that helps him to depend on the Lord. And when he depends on the Lord, that allows the grace of Jesus Christ to help him overcome all. I pray that the Lord may help me to learn to be thankful for my challenges and to depend on him. And as I do that, he will help me overcome all things. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.